morning shortly after my 13th birthday. I walked out to the living room and saw my mom reading One, Two, Three, Magic Teen. Communicate, connect, and guide your teen to adulthood by Dr. Thomas W. Fallon. My first thought was that she doesn't need to be reading this. She knows how to parent me. I'm not going to change. Yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> the next week I was thinking to myself, what if I wrote a book about parenting? Wouldn't that be interesting? I bet every parent would like to know what their teen's thinking about their parenting. So when this opportunity popped up, I thought this would be a perfect topic to talk about. We'll start with technology, because technology is an area where teens and parents usually don't get along. Mostly because of the difference between technology from today and when my parents were teens. In my opinion, I think a child should get a phone based off of the environment. So what I mean by that, if your child lives in Iowa, kids usually don't need a phone in grade. But for kids who live in New York City, they have to walk to school and get food in the city, so it's more important to have a phone at a younger age for safety purposes. There's age, but there's also time to consider. For me, I think the time should be anything that the parents can handle. What I mean by that, if you are spending 12 hours on your phone and tell your kid you only have one hour of screen time, there's a problem. Don't set time limits for a kid if you can't follow them too. I mean, come on parents, have a little fairness. A time should be anything that you can handle. In order to understand your teen, you need to understand what your teen thinks of you. Some teens describe their parents as certain stereotypes. These stereotypes fall into two categories, the boss and the loosey-goosey. The boss is a strict parent that you might hear saying, what I say goes, and when you make the money, then you can make the rules. The loosey-goosey lets anything slide. For example, a teen could stay up all night, but the loosey-goosey wouldn't have a problem with that. Also, a loosey-goosey could also be okay with one thing and be strict on another. For example, a teen could have a very strict bedtime, but have as much screen time as they like. The parent that I like to see is not the boss, nor the loosey-goosey, but in the middle. I call this parent the listener. The listener gives directions, but let their teen have options. The boss and the loosey-goosey aren't bad parents, but the listener takes the good out of these two and then leaves the bad. Imagine your teen wants to quit the basketball team and get a job at McDonald's. The listener would ask questions before the team would make a decision. The listener would also give directions on places to work if they didn't want them to work that place. But how can you listen to your teen if he or she is so mad? Or how can your teen listen to you if you're so mad? Let's talk about emotions. So, emotions. We all have them. But teen emotions are very special. According to Marwa Azab in her PhD article, Why Are Teens So Emotional? The part of the brain that controls the emotional system is called the limbic brain structure. The limbic system is slower to develop than our logical system. It takes some time for a teen to connect her emotional system and her logical system. Basically, when I'm feeling sad or mad, the emotions feel very intense. When I'm feeling sad or mad, it feels like a wave has just crashed into me. I'm not thinking why I'm sad or mad. It's just there. One day after tennis practice, I was thinking to myself, I don't really want to join the team. It was a lot of work and it was every day, so I asked my mom about it in the car. She said that we're committed to the team. And all of a sudden, I started crying. I couldn't stop. That wave of emotions just hit me and I cried all the way home. And my mom was so calm about it. That made me even more mad. I was expecting my mom to get really mad at me, but when she didn't, that got me really mad. When I got home and calmed down, I was thinking about what just happened. I just had my first mood swing, and I didn't even know it. So what I learned about parenting from my first mood swing is that when your teen's experiencing a wave of emotions, the key for parenting is to stay calm. If you stay calm, your teen's wave of emotions will pass, and they'll realize that they're being silly. But if you fight back, your teen actually has a reason to be mad. They won't think about how they just had a mood swing, they'll think about how you just yelled at them. So parents, if your teen's experiencing a mood swing, stay calm and realize it's not you, it's emotions. As a beginner teen, I'm starting to learn about emotions, understanding technology, and seeing different types of parents. I also understand since I'm the oldest, my parents are figuring this out too. And by the way, I love my parents, and this is not about how bad they are at parenting. This comes from a variety of places and my realization on, wow, it's really hard to parent a teen. We all experience like what it's to be a teen, but with a little bit of listening, we'll all get to the finish line. Thank you.